Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Silver City Community Theater Radio Hour, right here Sundays at 5 on Gila Members Community Radio, KURU 89.1 FM in Silver City, New Mexico, and online at gmcr.org. I'm Wendy Spurgeon, your hostess here with weekly radio theater entertainment, edited by Chris Wellman of Mystic Way Productions, featuring the abundant local talent of Silver City Community Theater and beyond. You're just in time for SCCT Radio Hour Season 2, Episode 13, Thanksgiving leftovers with old-time radio classics. My Favorite Husband was the first radio series to star motion picture musical comedy performer Lucille Ball. It was sort of a forerunner of TV's I Love Lucy. The series debuted in 1948 and ran until 1951. Later, Lucille Ball and husband Desi Arnaz moved to TV with I Love Lucy, featuring Sarah Thrasher, Billy Dominguez, Mary Barrett, Carol Gatta, and Liz Michaels in Dinner for Twelve. You might just laugh so hard you'll cry. Sarah and Billy also handle dessert for us with their fresh batch of Jello jingles. Special thanks to Chris Wellman for transforming my voice into that of a teenage delivery boy. Enjoy Dinner for Twelve with My Favorite Husband. It's time for My Favorite Husband, starring Lucille Ball. Jello, everybody. Yes, it's the Gay Family Series, starring Lucille Ball with Richard Denning, transcribed and brought to you by the Jallo family of Red Letter Desserts. Oh, the big red letters stand for the Jallo family. Oh, the big red letters stand for the Jallo family. That's Jallo, yum, yum, yum. Jallo puddings, yum, yum, yum. Jallo tapioca puddings, yes, sorry. And now, Lucille Ball with Richard Denning as Liz and George Cooper, two people who live together and like it. In a little white two-story house located at 321 Bundy Drive in the bustling little suburb of Sheridan Falls, George Cooper is just leaving for the bank. Goodbye, my little husband. Kiss me, baby. Mm-hmm. You'll be home for dinner, won't you? Uh, oh, dinner. Uh, Liz, I I forgot to tell you something. What? Now, promise me you won't get mad. Oh, go ahead. Nothing you say will upset me this morning. I'm in a good mood, and I'm going to stay that way all day long. I invited Mother to dinner. Well, that was a short day. <laughs> now, Liz, you promised you wouldn't get mad. I'm not mad, but your mother was here for dinner just two days ago. That was two weeks ago. How time flies. Oh, Liz, really. You're being very unfair. She's coming over to dinner tonight, so so why don't you just be nice to her? Okay, George, I'll be nice to her. I'll feed the hand that bites me. Spinach, Mother Cooper? Thank you, Liz, dear. George, would you like some spinach? I don't believe so, Liz. But, George, baby, now we should eat our spinach. But I don't like spinach. Oh, we must all eat a well-balanced meal to keep our strength up. After all, food is the fuel and your body is the furnace. Yeah, but George's furnace has turned into a pot-bellied stove. (laughs) I must say, Elizabeth, I don't consider that George is overweight at all. In fact, I think he's been looking a little thin and peaked lately. Ah, here it comes. Have you been getting enough to eat, baby? Oh, sure, Mother. Well, you don't look like it to me, baby. Don't you worry, Mother Cooper. Baby gets his pablum every three hours. Well. Coffee, anyone? Not for George, Katie. It keeps him awake, and you know he needs his beauty sleep. Uh, Coffee, Mrs. Cooper? 
No, Katie, it keeps me awake, and you know I need my ugly nap. All right, Liz. Let's talk about Monday night. What are you having for dinner? Monday night? Oh, no, I forgot to tell you. What? I invited the Atterberries and some important out-of-town clients for dinner. Oh, well, that isn't so bad, dear. How many will there be? Two? Four? Ten. <laughs> ten? As in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten? Yes, and uh, two of us makes twelve. Twelve? But, honey... We've had 12 to dinner before. I know, but I'm afraid Katie will get mad. No, she won't. Oh, I thought you were in the kitchen. No, ma'am. Well, I know it's short notice, Katie. It's only two days away. But do you mind if we have 12 people to dinner Monday night? Not at all. I think it's a wonderful idea. Well, Katie, are you sure it won't bother you? It won't bother me at all. I leave on vacation Sunday. Oh, no, I forgot. Oh, gosh. What will we do without Katie? Oh, that's simple enough. This will cook the dinner for 12 people. <laughs> <laughs> Liz cooking for 12 people. Oh, no. <laughs> well, let's all have a big laugh. It's good for the digestion. Ha, 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 ha. No, Liz, don't get sore. You'll have to admit that's a pretty funny idea. I fail to see what's so amusing about it. I could cook dinner. Of course, dear. If you knew how to cook. Well, I do know how to cook. Oh, Liz. What was wrong with the meal you just ate? Uh, Liz, did, did you cook dinner tonight? Certainly. I didn't put too much cheese in the souffle, did I? Oh, so you made the souffle, Elizabeth? Yes. Did you like it? Why, it was delicious. In fact, it was so good, I uh, wonder if you'd give me your recipe. I'd be glad to. I'll phone it to you in the morning. Oh, no, dear. I'd like it right now. Oh, well, uh, you just put all the cheese and things in a bowl, and then, then you take a piece of souf and lay it on the top. Yes, dear. But you didn't tell me how many eggs you used. Oh, eggs. Uh, Katie, you were watching me. How many eggs did I use? Six. That's right, six eggs. How much milk? Uh, milk? Katie? I wasn't watching. Ooh. Well, how many cups did it sound like? It sounded like one cup. Good ear, Katie. It was one cup. Look, Liz, why don't you just admit you don't know how to cook, and we'll hire someone to come in and get the dinner for us. Well, for 12 people, maybe... George, baby, since Liz has failed you in your hour of need, why don't you let Mother come in and cook for you? I'd be glad to do it. That does it. I'm going to cook the dinner. Oh, come off it, Liz. I'd like to see it when you're done. <laughs> Go ahead, laugh. I'll show you. I'll get dinner for 12 people and it'll be the best, the tastiest, the most wonderful dinner you ever saw. <laughs> Liz, is my breakfast ready yet? Here you are, George. Bacon, fried eggs, toast, and coffee. Mmm, this looks wonderful, honey. Thank you. Did you cook all this yourself? Sure, nothing to it. Go ahead, dig in. Liz, these eggs are stone cold. They are? Oh, darn it. Well, how could they get so cold? How long ago did you cook them? Last night. <laughs> Last night? Well, George, I'm going to be so busy with the dinner party today, I, I cooked your breakfast last night and quick froze it. Tall. Oh. Well, it's a perfectly good fried egg. I just didn't defrost it enough. Well, thanks anyway. I'll eat breakfast downtown. Well, suit yourself. Uh, Liz, um... Hmm? About this dinner party, are you sure you want to go through with it? Maybe we should have someone into... Now, don't worry, George. I have someone to help me. Who? Iris Atterbury. Oh, brother. I get a great mental picture of you and Iris in the kitchen. Two blind mice. <laughs> Never mind. We'll be just fine. Yoo-hoo! Anybody home? Oh, we're in the dining room, Iris. Oh, Liz girl. A George boy. 
Hi, Iris. Well, I've got to run or I'll be late. See you later, dear. Come on out in the kitchen. Okay. What are you going to have, Liz? Well, I thought I'd have chicken. Broiled chicken. (gasps) I love it. Iris, please. Does Oscar of the Waldorf have broiled chicken? I don't know. Does he? We're having poulette amandine. Huh? I have a wonderful French recipe. Oh, that sounds exciting. Is, Is it hard to do? No, there's nothing to it. All it calls for is, let's see now, for the dressing... Onions, butter, eggs, parsley, celery, and either mushrooms or nut meat. I love mushrooms, but I don't have any in the house. Well, I'll run down to the grocery while you're getting things ready. Oh, wait a minute. I just remembered. We have some growing in the backyard. Well, that's fine. Fine. Oh, then I won't have to go to the... (gasps) Hold it, girl. Are they mushrooms or toadstools? What's the difference? Toadstools are poisonous. Oh, dear. Well, isn't there any way of finding out if they're toadstools or not? Oh, sure. I'll go out and eat one. If I'm not back in an hour, use the nut meats. Oh, Iris, don't bother. We'll put in some walnuts instead. Okay. Well, let's get started. I'll cut the onions. Well, I'll help you. We'll get done faster. Okay. Here's an onion for you. Thanks. Oh, you know... I can't understand why people make such a fuss over cooking. There's really nothing to it. Uh, Yeah. You just follow the recipe and poof, chicken almondine. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I need another onion. Here. Oh, Iris, I I didn't know cooking could be such fun. (laughs) Neither did I. This is the best time I've had in ages. Me too. Well, it's pretty obvious that here's an occasion when Jallo can save the day. Sure as shooting, if Liz and Iris treat the clients to a Jallo dessert, the rest of the meal will be forgiven. I'll bet they'd all go for this autumn treat. Rich red strawberry jello teamed up with tart tangy pineapple. Just prepare strawberry jello as directed using one half cup of canned pineapple juice for one half cup of water. When slightly thickened, fold in one cup of diced canned pineapple and chill until firm. It's a glorious combination because that delectable strawberry jello now tastes even better than ever. Yes, it's been made richer even more fruit-like and tempting. All six delicious Jell-O flavors are chock full of locked-in goodness, tasting so fruit-rich and tempting, they're a new treat every time. That's strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. Look for the big red letters on the box. They spell Jell-O, a registered trademark of General Foods that stands for Red Letter Desserts. As we return to the Coopers, it's several hours later and we find the kitchen knee-deep in dirty saucepans, greasy skillets, broken eggshells, and well-thumbed cookbooks. Surveying the wreckage proudly are Liz and Iris Atterbury. Well, Iris, isn't it about time to take the chickens out of the oven? Well, we've got to be sure, girl. Yeah? Let's see. Uh, What oven did you use? Well, the only one we've got. That one on the stove. (laughs) No, no, no. I I meant what temperature. Oh, what? Ah, temperature. Uh, 600 degrees. (laughs) That sounds a little high. Well, it's what the book said. Oh, no, look here. The book says 300. I know, but we have two chickens, so I doubled it. I never would have thought of that. Let's see. What time did we put the chickens in? Nine o'clock, and it's, uh, 2.30 now. Five and a half hours. Well, they ought to be cooked. 
Let's take them out of the oven. I can't wait to see them. Well, where are they? They've got to be in there. Look in the back. Okay. Iris, don't you know this is a gas stove? Why did you put charcoal in here? Charcoal? Yeah, see in the back? Two little lumps of charcoal with legs and wings. It was all those breadcrumbs you put in. They burned like toast. Maybe we can take them out and scrape them. No, I don't think so, Liz. I think they're done for. You who, Elizabeth. Oh no, it's Mother Cooper. What timing? Timing nothing. If I know her, she waited outside till she caught the aroma of burnt meat. Elizabeth, where are you? She's lost the scent. <laughs> Quick, Iris, shut the oven. Okay. In the kitchen, Mother Cooper. Oh, Elizabeth, dear. Hello, Mrs. Cooper. Oh, Iris, how are you? I just dropped over to see how you were coming with your little dinner, Elizabeth. Oh, fine, fine. What are you having? If I'm not being too nosy. You nosy? Well, <laughs> what are you having? Chicken almondine. Really? It's my favorite dish. But you must watch the chickens once they're in the oven. If you aren't careful, they'll burn. No. Oh, yes. Yes, it's true. You just keep your eye on them until they get to be a nice, crinkly brown. How about a nice, crusty black? Iris! Elizabeth, what's that burn smell? It's me. Iris just gave me a hot foot. <laughs> Don't be silly. It's something in the oven. Let me see in there. No, don't. Aha. Just as I thought. They look like two little blackbirds. Well, what are you going to do now? I'm going to get two and 20 more and bake them in a pie. Well, I wash my hands of the whole thing. Good. Well. I certainly know when I'm not wanted. Since when? Well, good afternoon, Elizabeth. Must you rush off? Well, I never. That's telling her, Liz. She thinks you can't cook a dinner. So this one wasn't very good. You can cook another one. Sure. <laughs> Liz, girl, what's wrong? I can't go through this again. Oh, sure you can, and I'll help you get started before I leave. Oh, uh, leave? <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, girl. I have to get my hair fixed for the dinner tonight. Do you mean I'm going to have to burn the next two chickens all by myself? <laughs> now, Liz, you just fuck up. <laughs> Look, I'll stop by the market on the way to the beauty shop and have them send out two more chickens. Well, okay. And this time, don't try anything fancy. Put them in the pressure cooker. That way, they'll be done in a hurry. Yeah, in a hurry. Yeah, and while they're on their way here, you can start the dressing. Start the dressing? Start the dress... Liz? What? You're looking a little dazed. Are, are you sure you know what to do? Oh, sure. Well, you're having your hair done in the pressure cooker. I'll take the chickens to the beauty parlor. I mean, while the chickens are having their hair done, I'll be dressing in the pressure cooker. Oh, poor dear. I know what you mean. That's good. Well... If you need me, I'll be down at the beauty cooker. Uh, pressure parlor. Uh, uh, good luck, girl. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hello. Is that you, Liz? Yes. I just got home from the beauty parlor. How is it going? Oh, sure. What happened, girl? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Which two? Well, I know you burned two. What about the other two? 
Which two? Will you stop saying which two? Tell me what happened. Iris, you're talking to a woman who's gone through eight chickens today. <laughs> The pressure cooker exploded. Well, what about the chickens? They look delicious. What do you mean they look delicious? I can't get them down off the ceiling. <laughs> well, that's four. What about five and six? Gone. Gone? I got so confused cleaning up after three and four, I threw five and six in the garbage disposal. <laughs> Finally, the butcher ran out of dressed birds and sent out two live ones. Well, did you cook them? Cook them? I can't even catch them. When last seen, seven and eight were going east on Bundy Drive. Oh, you poor thing. Eight chickens and nothing to show for it. Oh, yes, I have. Before she left, seven laid an egg on the kitchen table. Well, look, Liz, I had a feeling something like this might happen. So I... Iris? Iris, I have to go. There's someone at the back door. Well, don't worry about a thing, girl. I have a feeling everything's gonna be all right. Oh, sure. Goodbye. I'm coming! Uh, Mrs. George Cooper? Yes? Dinner for 12 from Johnson's Catering Service. A dinner for 12 people? Let me see. Oh, roast beef! And potatoes and green beans and Yorkshire pudding. Oh, thank you! Thank you! Mm. <laughs> You're welcome! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. You didn't send it. You just brought it. Where's the card? <laughs> Here. <laughs> Mrs. Cooper, I had a hunch you might have trouble with your dinner. Good luck, Katie. Oh, bless Katie and her hunches. Yeah. Well, I'll be seeing ya. Thank you again. The pleasure was all mine. Oh, that wonderful Katie. My dinner party's saved. I'll have to call Iris and tell her. Now, who's that? Hi, lady. Did you forget something? Oh, well, not exactly. I got in my truck, and I looked at the address of my next delivery, and it's you. <laughs> Me? Well, let's see what this one is. Oh, my goodness. Lobster Thermidor and French fries and asparagus. Oh, isn't that just scrumptious? Yeah. Aren't you gonna kiss me? Let me see the card. I knew you'd be needing this, dear girl. Signed, Iris. Oh, Iris is the best friend a girl ever had, isn't she? <laughs> I'll say. Iris who? Never mind. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, that Iris. I have to call her. Oh no, if that's who I think it is, I'm up to my snood in food. You again? Yeah, it's me, the Horn of Plenty. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see what this one is. Oh my, would you look at that? <gasps> Isn't it beautiful? Yeah. What is it? It's pheasant under glass. Where's the card? Here. Iris told me you were having your troubles. Hope this little snack fills the bill. Mr. Atterbury. Oh, isn't that sweet? Yeah. <laughs> I'm so grateful to you for bringing all these things. I want to give you a little something. Oh, boy. Unpucker, bud. Here's your tip. Gee, a bowl of Yorkshire pudding. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. You have? Uh-huh. I made a complete dinner for 12, and I'll bring it right over. Well, that's very nice of you, Mother Cooper, but thanks just the same. Dinner's all ready and waiting in the kitchen. Really? Elizabeth? 
Mm -hmm. What are you having? Well, I had a little extra time today, so I'm giving my guests a choice of prime ribs, lobster <laughs> thermidor, or pheasant under glass. <laughs> Well, why don't you come over to dinner too, Mother? I have plenty of food. Really? Yes, George will pick you up. Goodbye. La -da, da la -da, da Hello. Hello, dear. How's everything going? Oh, fine, fine. You uh, didn't knock yourself out cooking, did you? No, George, it was no effort at all. What time will you be here? Well, uh, that's why I called to tell you about. What do you mean? Well, honey, it's, uh, <laughs> it's the funniest thing. I, I just checked with my calendar and, uh, <laughs> yes, the dinner isn't tonight. It's next week. Oh, no. My Favorite Husband has been presented through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're just tuning in, you're listening to SCCT Radio Hour Season 2, Episode 13, Thanksgiving Leftovers with Old Time Radio Classics, here on Gila Members Community Radio, KURU 89.1 FM. That was My Favorite Husband with Dinner for Twelve. Next up on the menu, we have Father Knows Best. This Thanksgiving show script reunites our brilliant local cast, Doug Abbott, Greg Jarrett, Shelley Chase, Sarah Thrasher, Monty Valenzuela, Mia Riley and guest star Greg Bond for an episode sure to leave you feeling heartful and emotionally satisfied. Titled Thanksgiving Day, this old-time radio classic first aired on November 23rd, 1950. Enjoy Father Knows Best. Mother, is Maxwell House the best coffee in the whole world? Well, your father says so, and your father knows best. <laughs> Yes, it's Father Knows Best, transcribed in Hollywood, starring Robert Young as father. A half-hour visit with your neighbors, the Andersons, brought to you by Maxwell House, America's favorite brand of coffee. Look for that familiar blue Maxwell House tin featured in stores everywhere at lower prices. The lowest prices in months. Enjoy coffee that's always good to the last drop. Keep high the board with plenteous cheer and gather to the feast, and toast the sturdy pilgrim band whose courage never ceased. You know, the pilgrims started the custom of Thanksgiving, but there are others whose trials and tribulations on an average Thanksgiving day bear inspection and a certain amount of sympathy. Take for example the Andersons, who live in Springfield, in a white frame house on Maple Street. They count their blessings and give their thanks, but with three children in the house, even a simple rite like Thanksgiving can be a pretty complicated affair. Like this. Mother? We're in the den, Betty. Is it all right if I borrow your earrings? Betty, if you have anything to ask your mother, come down here and ask her. Jumping creepers. Sounds like she was reared in a barn. Stands up screaming her head off. Jim? Hmm? Kathy is waiting to read her poem. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, Kathy. Go ahead. Yes, Daddy. Go ahead, dear. Well, now what are you waiting for? I have to be introduced. <laughs> Pardon me. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the competition in the fourth grade, Miss Kathleen Anderson. Is that better? Now you have to applaud. Okay, we applaud. Thank you. What a ham. <laughs> Asked to get her applause before she reads the poem. Jim. Doesn't want to take any chances. All right, dear. Anytime you're ready. Yes, Mommy. Thanksgiving Day by Kathleen Joy Anderson. Fourth grade. Thanksgiving is a lucky day. Uh, uh, wait a minute. What was that name? The name? Your name. 
Say it again. Kathleen Joy Anderson. Where did the joy come from? Your name is Kathleen Louise Anderson. But I don't like Louise. You what? Jim, Kathy and I talked it all over. My mother's name is Louise. And if it's good enough for my mother, it's good enough for her. It's only a middle name, dear. And if she doesn't like it... Why shouldn't she like it? What's wrong with it? Nothing, Jim. But it's her name. You're darn right it's her name. She's not going to change it. <laughs> now go ahead. Mommy. Go ahead, dear. He whiz. My grandmother and her mother were named Louise. <laughs> no reason why she should want to change it. Well? What? Read the poem. Yes, Daddy. Thanksgiving Day by Kathleen Louise Anderson. That's more like it. Fourth grade. That's much better. Jim, please. All right. Kathy, go ahead. Thanksgiving is a lucky day for all the boys and girls. It isn't just like Christmas when your parents give you toys. It isn't even like Easter when you get an Easter bunny. Or even like your birthday when your uncle sends you money. What? <laughs> Jim. When did her uncle ever send her money? <laughs> or anything else? Kathy. She's nine years old. He's never sent her a button. <laughs> Gives her money. He's so tight he can't even sit down. Jim Anderson. I know you don't like him, but he's been very good to my sister. And if Kathy needs him for her poem... Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny and your brother-in-law. <laughs> Boy, is that a combination. Go ahead, Kathleen. Yes, Mommy. Thanksgiving Day by Kathleen... Uh, not from the beginning, Kathy. Start where you left off. I don't remember where I was. Your uncle was giving you money. <laughs> Oh. That's something we can all remember. Yes, Daddy. This isn't a poem. It's a fairy tale. Jim, if you say one more word. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Kathy. Is it all right if I start up near Christmas? Start anywhere you like, but start. Okay. Thanksgiving Day by <laughs> Kathleen Louise Anderson. Fourth grade. Oh, dear. Thanksgiving is a lucky day for all girls and boys. It isn't just like Christmas when your parents give you toys. It isn't even like Easter when you get an Easter bunny. Or even like your birthday when your uncle gives you money. I didn't say a word. Go ahead, dear. It isn't like the 4th of July, or Decoration Day, or Summer Vacation, or Halloween. Kathy. When are you going to stop telling us what it isn't like and tell us what it is like? How can she when you keep interrupting? It's supposed to be a poem about Thanksgiving, isn't it? And what has she said? It isn't like Christmas. It isn't like the 4th of July. Who said it was? Jim, the poem has already won the contest. We're just supposed to listen. But as long as... We're just supposed to listen. Go ahead, dear. You mean from the beginning? <laughs> no, no, no. Start after that funny part where your uncle gives you money. <laughs> okay. It isn't like the 4th of July or Decoration Day or Summer Vacation or Halloween when all the kids can play. No. Jim. Oh. Scare a man half out of his wits. Mother, is it all right if I borrow your earrings? Look what you've done. Ashes all over the floor. Well, I'll clean it up, Margaret. Don't worry about it. What happened? Nothing happened. I knocked over the ashtray, that's all. Go ahead, Kathy. Thanksgiving is a different day. Excuse me, Kathy. I have to speak to Mother. Let her finish the poem, Betty. Father, I told Janie Liggett I'd be there early. She's counting on me. You don't have to read a poem over the radio. Oh, no. You mean she's going to read that horrible thing in public? Thanksgiving is a lucky day. I didn't see you winning a free turkey. I didn't have to. The Liggetts are going to have three turkeys. Wait a minute. The way you kids talk, you'd think we'd never had a turkey in this house. <laughs> 
Jim. I've got a good mind to keep you all home. Father. Jim, it isn't a question of turkey. Kathy's principal told you. Why couldn't they have their dinner some other day? But Thanksgiving dinner was the prize, dear, for all eight grades. It's become a major event. And the Liggetts. If somebody looks cross-eyed, Janie Lickett has a party. Father, you said... I know what I said. And it'll be a relief to get you all out of the house. Your mother won't have to spend all day cooking a dinner you'll wolf down in 20 minutes. Jim? We'll have a little peace around here. Even if it is Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is a different day. The day I like the best. And Kathy, I haven't asked about the earrings. Which earrings, Betty? The ones with the rhinestones. Oh, dear. Those are much too old for you. Oh, no, they aren't, Mother. Really, they aren't. Thanksgiving is a different day. Er, uh, just a minute, Kathy. Betty, if your mother says they're too old for you... But they aren't, Father. I tried them on and... Don't you think something less formal would be more suitable? But, Mother... After all, rhinestones in the afternoon? Not good, huh? Not good at all. How about the little pearl ones? Oh, much better. May I? Mm-hmm. Of course, dear. Oh, thank you, Mother. You're an angel. Go ahead, Kathy. Maybe I ought to get the vacuum cleaner. The whole rug's a mess. Just leave it, Jim. I'll clean it later. It'll only take me a second. Jim. All right, Kathy. Now? <laughs> yes. Get it over with. Please. Thanksgiving is a different day, the day I like the best. It's even better than Sunday, which is called the day of rest. Thanksgiving is my favorite day. So long, everybody. Oh, goodbye, dear. Now have a nice time. Bud, what are you doing with my suitcase? What? Thanksgiving is my favorite day. <laughs> Come in here and bring the suitcase. Gosh, I'm not going to hurt it, Dad. Did anybody say you could borrow my suitcase? No, Dad. Then why are you taking it? Well, I have to carry them in something. To carry what? The football letters. They're going to give them out at the dinner. And the coach said... Put it back where you got it. But the coach said I could eat with the team. I said put it back. Holy cow. <laughs> Thanksgiving is my favorite day. <laughs> Jim... He isn't going to hurt anything. That's not the point. He has no right to take things without asking for them. But you were busy, Dad. I tried to ask you this morning, remember? I said, Dad? And you said you thought it was going to be wonderful. You and Mom to have Thanksgiving dinner in a restaurant for a change. And I said, Dad? And you said you thought everybody made too much of a fuss about Thanksgiving anyway. And I said, Dad? And you said, Bud? Hmm. Take the suitcase. Oh, boy. And next time, ask for it. I tried to. Dad, I said... Bud! Okay, Dad. Goodbye now. Oh, is Billy here, dear? He's parked out front. Well, have a good time. Don't eat too much turkey. I won't. See you later. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye, Betty. Uh... Bye. Thanksgiving is my favorite day. <laughs> Just a minute, Kathy. Bud, are you driving downtown with Joe Phillips? Yes, Dad. Why don't you drop Kathy off at the school? Okay. Come on, Kathy. I haven't finished my poem. Well, why haven't you? I haven't heard anything else for the past hour. I tried to read it, and first you said that Uncle Richard... Come on, Kathy, will ya? I'm late. Nobody ever lets me do anything. Just because I'm the littlest one in this family. Kathy, read the poem. Everybody thinks they can pick on me. Kathy! Thanksgiving is my favorite day, dear. That's where you left off. And they don't have any right to. Thanksgiving is my favorite day. Though the skies are gray and murky, because that's the day when I get to eat the drumstick of the turkey. Well? That's the end. Some poem. Bud? It's a very lovely poem, Kathy. Thank you, Mommy. You mean that won the competition? Jim. Well, er, I'm not surprised. It's, um, very good. A little, uh, uh, sentimental perhaps, but very good. Thank you, Daddy. Get your coat, Kathy. 
Let's go. Mr. Bryant said he'd bring me home, Mommy. That's fine, dear. And don't forget to listen to the broadcast. We won't. And behave yourself. Come on, will ya? Well, stop pulling me. Why do you always have to pull me? Thanks for the suitcase, Dad. That's all right. Have a nice time, bud. You too, Kathy. Goodbye. Be a good girl, Kathleen. I will. So long. Goodbye, dear. Well. <sighs> I am completely exhausted. I don't know where they get all that energy. Margaret, did she really win the competition with that poem? <laughs> She's only in the fourth grade, Jim. That's very good for the fourth grade. When I was nine, I could write poems like that standing on my head. Well, if you've ever seen Kathy study, you'd know that that's probably the way she wrote it. Margaret? Yes, dear? Have you noticed how quiet it is? <laughs> yes, dear. Hasn't been this quiet for weeks, has it? No, dear. Well, it does you good to get away from the kids for a while. Gives you a chance to relax, take things easy, read your paper and, uh, er, things. Yes, dear. Get the kids out of the house and it makes all the difference in the world. Get a little peace and quiet, don't you? Yes, dear. All that excitement and shouting and running up and down stairs, absolutely unnecessary, isn't it? I suppose so, dear. Margaret? Yes, dear? I'm lonesome. <laughs> Yes, dear. Well, father has a right to feel lonesome. After all, Thanksgiving is a family day. But whether or not the family can gather to join in the festivities, we all have many things to be thankful for. We Maxwell House people, for instance. We're happy that our coffee is America's favorite brand. Happy that in so many homes, Thanksgiving dinner means a pot of Maxwell House coffee brewing on the stove, as well as the turkey in the oven and the pumpkin pies cooling on the shelf. We take a lot of pride in our coffee. And we want you to know you can count on Maxwell House, every cup you pour. We'll keep it always good to the last drop, on Thanksgiving Day and every day in the year. That was very good, Barbara. Very good indeed. Our next winner is a rugged individualist indeed. Jim, it's Kathy. I'll be right in. She put her thoughts on Thanksgiving into a verse and will now read the poem, which won for her the competition in the fourth grade. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Kathleen Anderson. Is it Kathy? Has she started yet? Jim, be quiet. Well, I just wanted to know. Shh. Thanksgiving Day by Kathleen Joy Louise Anderson. <laughs> hmm. Thanksgiving is a lucky day for all the girls and boys. It isn't like Christmas when your parents give you toys. Well, why doesn't she go on? Jim, please. Go ahead, Kathleen. It isn't as if she had to remember anything. She's got it right in front of her. Oh, but dear, she's probably very nervous. Well, she can read, can't she? Kathleen, we're waiting. <laughs> Ye gods, now what's gotten into her? Oh, the poor little thing. Oh. Miss Anderson just remembered a previous engagement. <laughs> well, perhaps we'll had better luck with our next little guest, the winner of the competition in the fifth grade. You see, Margaret, I told you she shouldn't have gone. Oh, my poor baby. I've never heard anything like that in my entire life. She was frightened, Jim, that's all. Frightened of what? 
You can't shut her up when she's in the house. As soon as she's supposed to talk, she makes a noise that sounds like Georgie Jessel. I tell you, Margaret. Yes, Jim. Do you think we ought to go down and get her? Oh, I don't think so. Poor kid's probably crying her heart out. She'll get over it. And don't forget, they promised her two drumsticks. I don't know. She didn't sound very hungry. Do I? What? You promised me a Thanksgiving dinner at the townhouse, remember? Ah, yes, I did, didn't I? I'll get my hat and coat. Or, uh, would you rather have me sue you for breach of promise? Margaret? Jim, there isn't anything wrong, is there? Oh, no, honey, everything's fine. It's just that, well... Yes? I've been doing a lot of thinking, and, um, er, would you mind very much if we didn't go out? Why, Jim. I know, I promised you dinner, but, well, I'd just rather eat here. But there isn't anything to eat. Sure there is. I saw a whole heap of hamburger in the icebox. Hamburger? On Thanksgiving Day? Margaret, to tell you the truth, this, er, doesn't seem much like Thanksgiving. Not like the kind of Thanksgiving we used to know. Well, it's finally happened. After only 18 years, you're tired of me. <laughs> oh, you know what I mean, don't you, honey? <laughs> I think so. Thanksgiving has always been um, a special sort of day for me, even when I was a boy. It was more than just a holiday. It was a time when the whole family got together and had fun. We used to go out into the country to my grandmother's. We did, too. Go to my grandmother's, I mean. The whole family used to be there. My Uncle Rob and his wife and their eight children. And my Uncle Will and his wife and their ten children. <laughs> that must have been cozy. Oh, it was. We ate in shifts. <laughs> my grandmother always swore she was feeding half of the neighbor's kids. Ah, but that was fun. Did you play games after dinner? Heck no. We were so stuffed we couldn't move. Oh, you were a bunch of sissies. We used to play going to Jerusalem or musical chairs or charades. That's pretty hard to do with just two people, isn't it? Jim, there's one thing we mustn't forget. This is a new generation. It's a different sort of generation with new ideas and a new sense of values. Times have changed. Mm, I guess they have. Let's, um, let's go into the kitchen and see what we can throw together. <sighs> You're an old sentimentalist, Jim Anderson. That's what you are. <laughs> and I love you. I love you, too. You know, maybe if the kids get home early, we can all go to the movie or something. How'd you like that? Oh, I wouldn't count on it, dear. Betty said not to expect her before midnight, and Bud's dinner won't start until six. Well, Kathy isn't going to stay out all night, is she? Well, no. Okay, then we'll take Kathy to the movies. Well, we'll see, dear. It all depends on... Bud! Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. What are you doing here? Fixing the hammer. <laughs> Want one? What happened to the dinner? What dinner? At the training table with the football team. Oh, that dinner. Well? I don't know. I guess I just wasn't hungry. Weren't hungry? You? Jim, I'm going to call Dr. Simmons. Uh, wait a minute, Margaret. Bud, if you aren't hungry, why the hamburger? The hamburger? Pardon me, the three hamburgers. Oh, well, I... I guess I got hungry. Oh, Bud. If you don't feel well, please tell us. But I do feel well, Mom. I feel fine. Look, bud, if you don't want to tell us the truth... But I am telling you the truth. I didn't like the dinner, that's all. Bunch of big goofs sitting around talking about football. What good is that? Since when don't you like to talk about football? Just a second, honey. Kathy! It's me, Father. What's she doing home? What on earth is... Um, we're in the kitchen, Betty. I'll be right in. Oh, dear. Just when everything was going so well. Margaret, why do you immediately assume that something is wrong? 
Maybe the Liggetts decided not to have a party, or maybe Betty had the wrong day. Lots of things could have happened. The party was today. I know it was. Well, maybe it hasn't started yet. What's everybody doing in the kitchen? Oh, hi, bud. What are you doing here? Oh, nothing much. Want a hamburger? Okay. Never mind the hamburgers, bud. We've got things to discuss that are much more important. Than hamburgers? <laughs> Do you feel all right, dear? Sure. Why? You told your mother you wouldn't be home until midnight. Oh, well, I... Well, I wasn't going to, but I came up with the most awful headache. Jim? You just said you felt fine. I do. Oh, I mean, I do except for this headache. Jim, I'm going to call Mrs. Liggett and ask her... Mother, you know if there was anything wrong, I'd tell you. I always have, haven't I? Uh, yes, dear. You have, but... Er, uh, just a minute, Margaret. Kathy! Yes, Daddy? We're in the kitchen. Come on in. Yes, Daddy. See, Margaret? I told you we should have gone down for her. Well, I had no way of knowing. What's the matter with Kathy? Your sister reads the first line of her poem and bursts into tears. No kid. The poor little thing. Hello. <laughs> oh, Angel. Hello, sweetheart. Come on over here and tell your daddy all your troubles. I don't have any troubles, daddy. <laughs> I'm just not happy. Well, it isn't anything to cry about, is it? It was a lovely poem, darling, even if you didn't read it. And don't you worry, Nothead. If anybody makes fun of you, I'll poke him right in the nose. Oh, bud. I don't care if they do make fun of me. I didn't want to read my poem. Not to them. Why, Kathy, they're your friends. I don't want them. It's Thanksgiving, and I wanted my mommy and my daddy and my sister and my brother. I was lonesome. <laughs> oh, Kathy, darling. <laughs> She's all right, Margaret. Just leave her alone. Mother? Yes, Betty? I was lonesome, too. <laughs> oh, now wait a minute. Oh, Jim. Margaret, not you, too. <laughs> Yeah, me too. Good grief. We sound like the third act of Uncle Tom's Cabin. What's the matter with you, bud? Nothing. I just feel like blowing my nose, that's all. Well, blow it. Now get busy with the hamburgers. Okay, Dad. How about a little food for the hungry Andersons? I'm starving. Hamburgers. It's a fine thing to serve for a Thanksgiving dinner, isn't it? It sounds fine to me. I don't care what part of the hamburger I get, as long as it's the drumstick. <laughs> Atta girl, Kathy. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's sit down and be comfortable. Well, I'll take over, bud. I'm doing fine, Mom. Oh, bud, really? Now, don't argue with the chef, Margaret. Just sit down and relax. Well, if you insist. Four hamburgers coming up. Well, that'll take care of me, but what are they going to eat? <laughs> <laughs> Betty. <laughs> oh, you big pig. Margaret, kids, before we dig into these juicy Thanksgiving burgers, may I say something? Go ahead, dear. Go ahead, father. Sure, daddy. This has been, I think, the happiest Thanksgiving day of my entire life. And if you don't mind, I'd like to say a special grace. Oh Lord, we give thee thanks from the bottom of our humble hearts for the blessings thou hast seen fit to bestow upon us. We thank thee for the food that graces our table and the roof that covers our head. We thank thee for the privilege of living as free men in a country which respects our freedom and our personal rights to worship and think and speak as we choose. But most of all, dear Lord, we thank Thee for making us a family, for giving us sincerity and understanding. We thank Thee for giving us the most cherished gift a family may know, the gift of love for one another. Amen. It's morning now. 
And in the Anderson breakfast nook, life has eased back into its accustomed groove. Thanksgiving Day is over, but the Andersons, well, they go on forever. Like this. Why can't I wear lipstick? Claudia McHugh does, and she's only 12. Here's your coffee, dear. Thank you. Well? Well what? Well, why can't I? Because I said you couldn't. And eat your breakfast. Gee whiz. Oh, Margaret, we've got to do something about that boy. He's beginning to shake the house. <laughs> I'll speak to him, dear. If he can't take it easy on the stairs, don't feed him so much. <laughs> One of these days, he's going to go right through. Hi, Dad. Good morning, Mom. Hi. Sit down and eat your breakfast. Good morning, dear. You didn't say anything to me. Hiya, squirt. Good morning. Mother, do you know what Bud did? He used my good cologne on his hair. Good morning, Betty. I used two drops. You used practically the whole bottle. I did not. Good morning, Betty. Mother, if I can't have a little privacy with my own things... Betty. What? Good morning. Good morning, Father. That's better. Sit down, eat your breakfast. Jumping creepers. You know, Margaret, there's one thing I'm really going to enjoy about our Thanksgiving Day dinner yesterday. What's that, dear? We're probably the only family in Springfield that won't be eating leftover turkey for the next month. <laughs> yes, dear. What are we going to have for dinner tonight? Leftover hamburgers. <laughs> So you don't think your family will ever be hungry again? Well, just wait till tomorrow morning. The kids will be banging their spoons for breakfast the same as ever. So be ready for steaming bowls of hot post wheat meal. And tell the youngsters it's Hopalong Cassie's favorite hot cereal. Yes, hot post wheat meal with solid whole wheat nourishment and rich nut-like flavor that Hopalong sure goes for. Hot post wheat meal. You'll see, you'll all agree, it's the best hot cereal you ever ate. These days, stores everywhere are featuring lower prices on Maxwell House coffee. The lowest prices in months. Bring home one of those familiar blue tins tomorrow and enjoy coffee that's always good to the last drop. Join us again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson, with Roy Bargy and the Maxwell House Orchestra, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. So until next Thursday, good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House. Father Knows Best was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Ed James. Now stay tuned in for Dragnet, which follows immediately over most of these stations. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in tonight for SCCT Radio Hour Season 2, Episode 13, Thanksgiving Leftovers with Old Time Radio Classics here on Gila Members Community Radio, KURU 89.1 FM. <laughs> We hope you join us next Sunday and every Sunday at 5. Why not make us a part of your weekly routine? Next week, we'll hear three Christmas classics, The Grinch Who Stole Christmas, The Gift of the Magi, and yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus. This is your hostess, Wendy Spurgeon, wishing you a wonderful week, and bye for now. <laughs> <laughs>